tile pools and spas. Today, we're going to go over pool school. My name is Professor Kenny. <laughs> Today's first topic of our pool school is the five keys to basic pool care. Really, there's going to be five things that really define how to take care of your swimming pool. A lot of people think it's just chemistry, or a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to just run my filter all the time. But it's really a combination of a couple of different things that we found out. Five, in fact. The first of which is circulation. With the proper circulation, your sanitizers in your pool are mixed in properly. The water, more importantly, is actually filtered. Now, obviously, running your pump and filter 24-7 is probably an ideal situation as that alleviates any concerns of circulation as your pool is getting the most filtration possible and the most mixture of sanitizer. Oftentimes though, in today's economy, that's a little rougher to do. If you can't do 24-7, then ideally 10 hours a day during the warmest part of the day would actually be ample. So a lot of times what a lot of people do will get a, uh, a timer for their pump and filter system, run that timer for 10 hours during the warmer portion of the day, and then that's also a good time to vacuum and circulate the water um, or add any chemicals that you might need to add in as well during that 10 hour time period. The second area is filtration, which ties in with circulation. With filtration, numerous times the, the pump and filter system might be doing as much as they possibly can and the filter is actually clogged or dirty. Well, putting clean water through a dirty filter isn't really going to help out. It's actually going to make possibly the water dirtier. So regular filter maintenance is definitely preferred. There's different filter systems and we'll get into that in a different at a later time. But the three main ones in the industry are sand, DE, and cartridge filter systems. Uh, cartridge filter systems probably one of the easier to clean as you just open up the system, take out the cartridge, and hose off that cartridge, or soak it in what we call filter fresh solution, which is a mixture of acids and detergent bases so that it gets the oils and the other algae uh, particles off of that filter. Uh, DE filter systems you have to recharge and usually use in more DE powder. DE is what coats the filter and actually makes it so that it actually filters out a little bit more. Uh, sand filter systems, the water actually sifts through a layer of sand and the sand is actually what cleans the pool. To clean that you actually just what we call backwash which is reverse the flow of water through that sand and it takes the dirty water out of the system. So that is all the different types of filtration that's out there, but again, filtration is a big portion to keeping your pool water clean and clear. The third area is then cleaning the pool. Because circulation and filtration will only get you so far because sometimes you'll actually have some dirt, some debris, some sediment on the floor. Um, which also algae, a very common problem with pool water. Uh, algae is just a plant that grows in water, so it just needs sunlight and it just needs water uh, to really start growing. Um, with the algae, that actually usually grows in layers and it's off, oftentimes in the corner of the pool where there is less circulation and it's a little bit harder to filter out. So that's where a regular cleaning would work, uh, work out well. Um, for cleaning off algae, for cleaning off the interior of a pool wall, uh, usually you actually do want to start with the walls and actually then work your way through the bottom of the pool then too. That really helps loosen up any dirt, debris, algae that's on the pool walls or on the pool bottom so that it actually can be circulated, uh, circulated properly and get into the filter, which then again you might need to clean the filter, or it gets into circulation where then it's easier to, to filter out. The next area is just testing the water. For testing the water, you're going to use either our test strips or your drop reagents. 
uh, testing the water after heavy use, after a large rainstorm. Um, oftentimes that's the kind of the best time to also be looking at that water because that's when the biggest change has occurred. Um, if you're regular use and regular testing, you should be fine, but make sure after those heavy uses, usages or a heavy rainfall, uh, you do want to make sure that you want to test that water, um, get the pH, the alkalinity, and probably most importantly the chlorine and or bromine levels into the correct ranges. That way we're able to keep a nice clean circulated pool. And the last portion of it, testing, which definitely just leads right into the actual chemistry of the pool water. And that's where I was just mentioning pH, alkalinity, the chlorine levels, the chemistry is what we'll be focusing on in another uh, later session for pool school. But this is actually, again, the, the fifth portion of your basic pool care is chemistry. There's really four other things that lead up to that. Uh, this is usually the one that most people focus the most on, but it's only one of five. So again, you want to make sure that the chemistry is correct in terms of the pH and the alkalinity and the, and the chlorine, um, and then also calcium hardness, cyanuric uh, acid levels, uh, salt systems, fantastic systems, love salt water. You just want to make sure that the salt level is also good, but the salt is what's actually producing chlorine in those systems on a regular basis, so it's actually kind of alleviates some of the testing and, and the chemistry issues because it's always producing that chlorine. Um, but chemistry is an important part of it. Again, remember it's just one of five though. We'll discuss chemistry at a later date. Thank you for attending Pool School Session 1. I'm Professor Kenny. Thanks for stopping by.